all knew this mystery. Well, why does the body of Christ fight so hard over tithing? You want me to tell you why? I'll tell you why. It's because they're scared of the natural. They've grown so used to living in the subnatural that if you tithe, the blessing comes down, pulls the subnatural up to the natural, and then it's called the supernatural, pulling it up to the natural, the natural state that Adam lived in, and it scares disciples. The calm in their lives scares them more than the, the storm. And they think everything's going so well, it can't be something bad is about to happen. It scares them. They just rather fight through the storm. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. And I want to tell my 11th hour partner something. The tithe is not an evil statement. I remember 25, 30 years ago, the statistic was that 18% of the body of Christ tithe. That was 18 out of 100, 25, 30 years ago. Now, the statistic is four out of 100 tithe. What is the enemy so scared of the tithe about? Because he knows it will open the windows of heaven. It destroyed the giants in the days of Noah. It erased everything the enemy was trying to do to destroy mankind. And those of you that study the Nephilim and all of that know it was the flood that did it. And it was the tide that opened those windows. It's all connected to this. So the body of Christ has got to learn a mystery. And it's a mystery that I, I want to make it deeper right here. I hope you got your shouting shoes on, man. If you don't, shout in the ones you got until you get where you can put them on. Hallelujah. Okay, you ready? All right, Lord, show us this thing. and Show us this thing, Lord, the way you want us to see it. It's amazing here. The tithe is even tied to the catching away of the church. That's an amazing thing. How? It's a prophetic thing. I'm going to show you. Right, watch this. Now, <clears throat> I want us to go over to Genesis 28. Now, let's look at Genesis 28. I'm on remote here today, so I don't think we can put the scriptures up. So we'll have to go back to the, the old way. The way. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. Are you ready? So in Genesis 28, Jacob has a vision. He lays his head on a pillow. You know, he's headed down to Laban's house. He gets to Bethel. Now, watch this. It says here in verse 10, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. It's very important. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord. I am the Yahweh, God, Elohim of Abraham, thy father, and the God, the Elohim of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it and unto thy seed, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Mm. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Here was a place that the Lord was in, and Jacob didn't know it. He didn't know it. Somehow, toward the end of Isaac's life, and in Jacob's time, they were about to forget the tithe. They were about to forget what brings the blessing. So the Lord starts talking about the blessing again. Watch what he says now. He says, 
Jacob waked out of his sleep and he said, surely the Lord was in this place. I knew it not. Verse 17. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God, Bethel. And this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning, took the stones that he had put for his pillows, set it up for a pillow and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow, watch this vow, saying, if God will be with me and I and will keep me in this, this way that he's seen, that I go, I will I get, and give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, that's his natural world, so that I come again to my father's house. Whatever Jacob is about to do is power to be brought from heaven to invoke the blessing that will keep God's people until they go to their father's house. It's amazing. This is powerful stuff. It's prophetic stuff. And Jacob is revealing it, Jacob being a prophet. Listen to what, but this is a mystery. Satan will just soon you not know it. But you know what? He's a jerk anyway. Now watch this. So that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Yahweh be my God, my Elohim. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Uh Oh, Jacob saw what opened the heavens. And he saw that the tithe invokes the angelic host to work with him. The tithe, they take the tithe up the ladder to the Lord. The Lord in all capitals is always tied to the tithe because the Lord in all capitals in the authorized King James is Yahweh. We say Jehovah, but it's Yahweh. And so what it is, yod He vav He, he who lives in eternity, the circular God. It's talking of the God, what goes around, comes around. It's talking about God and his system of harvest. And so anytime you see that, it's tied to a harvest and it's tied to the tithe. Jacob said, I'll give a tithe of all, all of it. Now watch what happens when Jacob became a tither. Something took place. Look over at chapter 30. You ready for this? So Jacob ends up marrying Leah and Rachel. He ends up and Laban or Laban. He, you know, he tricks him. He cons him and so forth. And when it gets over here, look at verse 25. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away that I may go into mine own place, into my country. Give me my wives, my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service, which I have done thee. Jacob's ready to go home. He has he is ready to leave. He wants to go home. Watch to his father's house. He wants to go home. Laban represents the world. Laban loves money. Laban loves the wealth. Watch what Laban says to him. Verse 27, and Laban said unto him, or Laban, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry a while, tarry. For I have learned by experience that the Lord, Yahweh, hath blessed me The blessing has come on me for your sake. Jacob's a tither. And he said, appoint me thy wages and I will give it. Now, just think about this. Laban, he's a Syrian. Man, there it is again. And he says to Jacob, tell me what you want to make and I'll pay you. How would you like to have your boss tell you? Well, look, I've learned my company's blessed because you're here. Tell me what you want to make. You name your wages. Man, 
Well, you find out as you go down through here. Watch what happens. He says, verse 29, he said unto him, thou knowest how I have served thee and how thy cattle or thy sheep was with me, for it is little which thou hast before I came, and now it is increased unto a multitude, and the Lord hath blessed me since my coming. And now when shall I provide for my own house also? He said, what shall I give thee? And Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle or sheep, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. For so shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come. When it shall come for my hire before thy face, every one that is not speckled, spotted among the goats, and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. And he removed that day the he-goats that were ring-straked and spotted, and the she-goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep and gave them into the hand of his sons. And he set three days journey betwixt himself and Jacob. And Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flock. So Jacob said, give me the speckled and spotted sheep. Laban said, great. But he's a greedy man of the world. So he went and removed all the speckled and spotted. And all Jacob had was white sheep. But Jacob had something going for him. And I'm just going to tell you the story now. You can go read it. He said, <clears throat> he took these white, he took these poplar rods, these staffs, and he peeled streaks in them and spots in them. And he laid them in the gutters. And when the sheep came to water and they began to mate in front of those rods, the sheep conceived speckled, spotted, ring straked lambs and sheep. And he's, <clears throat> man, I want you to notice something. I don't care. Now, you've got to stop and think about this. <clears throat> it makes no difference <clears throat> how many sheep stare at a speckled rod. They are not going to have speckled sheep unless a power from on high comes into that enters somehow. Jacob never had that kind of supernatural creative power in his life until he became a tither. After he became a tither in 28 by chapter 30, he's got sheep changing their DNA. They're changing DNA. The natural order of things has shifted around and Jacob is absolutely uh, seeing creative miracles happen within the sheep because the windows of heaven opened and the blessing came upon Jacob because he was a tither. <clears throat> Man, I don't know what you think about that, but that is powerful. This prophet saw, and when he went to tell his wives about what happened, he said, Notice he never got in strife over Laban stealing all the speckled and spotted sheep and making them start from scratch. He never got in uh, strife over it. <clears throat> it didn't bother him that he had been stolen from because he went to his wives and he said, when they started producing, he said, listen to me. I had a vision. He said, the angel of God. Now, this is, a, this is something. The angel of Elohim. He said, the angel of God. Elohim is God in his creative state. He said the angel came. He remembers the tithe. The angels were going up and down that ladder. He said, it's the angel of God. <clears throat> Told me, he said, look, Jacob, look at all the cattle that leaps up on the, uh, on the sheep when they're mating. He said, they see them ring strike, speckled, spotted, grizzled. He said, see them like that. And he said, and Jacob said, this is what he was talking about. My righteousness will, will speak for me. He was about to prove the vision, the prophetic vision and the dream he had. Jacob operated in the prophetic in dreams 
a lot, just like Joseph. And so now you know why Jacob, Jacob knew that the stronger, he was shown that the stronger was in the speckled, the spotted, the ring straight, the grizzled. Not just one race, all of them, all the colors coming together. All that was where the strength was. And so he knew that they would be the stronger. And now you know what was in his mind when he made the coat of many colors and put it on Joseph. He was trying to pass this vision of the ring strength, the speckled, the spotted, grizzled on. But he never had that power <clears throat> until he became a tither. So the tithe opens the windows of heaven. And the tithe lets that empowerment come into the earth that will change the natural order of things. And even if bosses, even if people do you wrong, even if people take things from you, it will empower you. It will empower whatever you touch to even change the DNA of the natural order and structure of things to bless you. It'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. And all nations will call you blessed. That's the secret of the tithe. The tithe, it's letting God touch the thread that touches everything else. Hallelujah. 